Remember, when Look At Me said you'll find the blackmail letter at Delight's house, he did f flat out be the he was the one that told us about the letter being at Ron's house. So this is very possible that it was actually his blackmail letter and he used it to plant on Ron. But let's see. What do you mean by that? Or, let me get back to what Ron Delight did. Or he planted it at Ron Delight's house and Ron was the one that stole that stone in the first place. I, I'm, I'm a little confused on it. Just a little bit. But, if anything, he planted it. Like, he got the letter, then he gave it to Ron and used it against Ron to basically... Basically, it was to add me and use it against Ron. That's all I can say. When he planted it there, I'm assuming he planted it there to get Ron to show up so he could plant the whole crime on him. So that just, or whatever you can call it. Pin the whole crime on him. Anyway, let's just stop speculating and let it all fall into place, please. Oh my, I was certain you were already aware. Sorry. KB Security, oh, sorry. KB Security has a lot of you know, security info on all sorts of companies. And since I was a security team chief, I stole data from the company. Oh yeah, that thing. No one cares. Kane Bullard had yet to forgive young Mr. Delight. Which is why he sent him that letter upon mistakenly believing he was the thief. Here's a file that we discovered in Mr. Bullard's office. Evidence that Mr. Bullard was receiving money through blackmail. Hmm. However, isn't this a bit odd? Why did the defendant pay Mr. Bullard the money, even though he wasn't actually Master Mask? On that point, oh sorry. On that point, there was an unfortunate bit of chance. Mistake is quite quite excusable. Okay. Um, do you really think that this story is going to hold up? That assertion is not merely my own, I'm afraid. What do you mean? I have here a memo from Ron Delight's wife, Desiree Delight. Ronnie thinks he's Master Mask. Why did this music start playing? The hell? Don't you feel sorry for him? Please don't think too badly of him. Oh, I see. He was reading in Desiree's voice. I get it. Ha. Huh. Well, Mr. Trite? Uh, was he trying to act like Ms. Delight just now? I thought he was actually pretty convincing. Yeah, totally. I mean, the music kicked in. That's about it, really. Now that's just your imagination talking. Come now, Sir Lawyer. I'm afraid my imagination isn't the right word for it. This is deduction, the result of carefully applied reasoning. Can we hear that careful reasoning for ourselves? It's a long story, and better say it for another time. Hmm? Very well then, another time. Those so-called long stories aren't usually that long. At least not in my experience. So you're going to try to connect Detective Amy to Mr. Bullard, right? Yeah, that's right. Hopefully it won't require surgery either. In that case, you'll have to talk about the blackmail. That's true. Was that blackmail letter really intended for Ron? Since we don't have enough information, you should press him for more testimony. Maybe I'll be able to shake some contradictions loose that way. Wait, press him for more testimony? I just pressed him, like, for everything. You gonna make me press him some more? Am I supposed to just keep pressing on this shit over and over again? Ah. 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 Screw that, I'm presenting something. Um. Let me get back to the beginning here. Let me read them again. I look at me had no point of contact. Okay, there's no proof of that, but you know, Godot's gonna spit it, spit out his words that says there's there was a background check. Okay, fine. Decided to investigate Master Mask simply mistook who he was. There's nothing I can really say about that. It was Mr. Bullard who wrote the blackmail letter and sent it to Ronda Light. I mean, we have proof of that already, right? Like, I was told that it was written. Wait, I thought it was updated. Oh, sorry, not that. This. Written by Bullard. I got an idea. I'm gonna save it before I do any of this. <laughs> I was about to present the letter just now because I don't know what else to fucking do. If I press it more, I, I feel like I'm just gonna get the same shit. There was not really any uh any moments to let me press again, so I'm gonna just gonna I'm just gonna go for it and see what happens. Objection! Sweet.
Sweet. Mind if I ask you a few questions, Detective Amy? Well, if it's just a few, I guess it's all right. When you said that this letter was addressed to Ron Delight, I couldn't help but notice one major contradiction. Oh, he did say it was... That's right, he did say it was addressed, and it's not addressed to anybody, which we've already established. Contradiction? I don't know where a walking contradiction like you gets off saying things like that. You're one to talk. At times like these, men are made to express themselves with their fists. Why don't you show us what you've got there, Junior? Indeed. Time to man up, Mr. Wright. Show us the contradiction, contradicting evidence in the haunted... Wait, what? What is he saying? Show us the contradicting evidence in the content of the black... What? What's contradicting about the black... What? Show him evidence of it. Hold on. If you don't want your true identity revealed to the world, come to KB Security at 1 a.m. on October 12th and bring 50000 If you don't, I'll take the red diamond you received the other day. Contradicting. 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 I just like saying the word contradicting. It's good. It's good. Ron's testimony? Yeah, I can't even look at that. Buzzer. CEO. Newspaper clipping. The precious tear of Ebenon. Contradicting evidence to content of the blackmail letter. So I gotta just master the blackmail letter and know what's contradicting it. Red diamond you received the other day. What is the list say on it again? This list right here? Tear of Eminon Jewel. Crown of Bagnora. Left hand of Hades. Portrait of Magina. Tear of Eminon. The twelfth. Oh, I don't know. Wait, when was the uh when was the when was the heist in the photo this? Doesn't say when, right? Ten of them non, blah blah blah. No. Hmm. Uh... <sighs> See, what I was thinking is that the blackmail letter, the way Ron read it, if it wasn't to Ron, okay, let's say I'm right. It's to look at me, right? The red diamond on his finger is what this is referring to. Okay, let's take that out of the picture. If I'm right on that, that's fine. If if he gives it to Ron and Ron reads this, what is Ron going to decide that the red diamond means? The red diamond you received the other day. Okay, now what I was thinking is he thought it meant Desiree, but I think I'm thinking about that too abstract. Because he didn't receive Desiree the other day. You know, I thought it was like a metaphor. You know, your red diamond, your wife, dressed in red, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? I'm overthinking that, I think. I think it literally means the 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 the, 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 the tear of Eminon diamond. I think that's what it's referring to here. I think that's what it is. I, I'm like, I'm really trying to piece this together in my brain. And if that's the case, then red diamond is wrong. Because the Tear of Eminon is very clearly, even stated by the judge himself, blue. Going for it. Going for it. We just saved it, so go for it. Fuck yes! Yes! I am a master of attorneying! I'm an ace, if you will. Anyway, 
Take a good look at this newspaper clipping. It contains a picture of the Tear of Eminon, the stolen jewel, bitch. What about it? The problem is the jewel's color. Color? I'm not much for discussing color myself. I'm colorblind. According to the clipping, the color of the stolen jewel was blue, bitch! However, in the blackmail letter, a totally different jewel is mentioned. I'll take that red diamond you received the other day. Red? Yeah, dumbasses, don't you know colors? Which means, the red diamond described in the blackmail letter is not the tear of Eminon that Master Mass stole at all! Objection! Uh-oh, uh-oh. And your point is, Mr. Trite? So you are trying to say that this blackmail letter was intended for someone else. That is what you're trying to say, right, Trite? That is what you're trying to say, right, Mr. Wright? Well, that is what you're trying to say, right, Nick? Yes. This is who Kane Buller was actually blackmailing. Easy, I already got this. Look at me, bitch. Naturally, it was you, Mr. Detective at me, bitch. Do you have some sort of basis for that claim? You have been personally involved in every single Master Mask case. And in the last case, you recovered what was stolen and received a jewel as your reward. A jewel? Oh, sorry. A jewel? Probably the one wrapped conspicuously around your fat, fat, fat finger, bitch! That red diamond ring there. Aw, yeah. Urgh. That is the diamond referred to in the letter. Which means that Kane Bullard wrote that letter in order to blackmail you, bitch! Aw, oh, yeah. Oh, it's looking real good now, bitch. It's looking real good now. Order! Uh, order ice. Oh, shit. Oh, what? oh, he's steaming. He's steaming. It seems you've gone too far with your childish pranks, Mr. Trite. Uh-oh. I don't like the way he said that. Kane Bullard blackmailing. Look at me. Are you for real? Y yes, I am. Nick, come on, stand up to him. Then answer me this. The blackmail letter contains the following passage. If you don't want your identity revealed to the world. Yes, it certainly does. Kane Bullard threatened to make Look at Me's identity public knowledge. An identity he wanted to keep a secret. So just what was that identity? Oh shit. At Me killed Kane Bullard because he was afraid of his secret becoming known. What was the identity you wanted to keep secret? This is what it all comes down to, Nick. The identity to look at me wanted to desperately keep secret was his identity as... Well, he's not... He, he definitely wasn't keeping his, his ace detective secret. There's no way. And if we say he's best to mask, that unravels our entire case. So he wants to... We've already established this. That Ron was getting other blackmail letters getting sent to him to do these heists and I think we can pretty much safely say that look at me is the one writing those blackmail letters so he's he doesn't want to be known as a blackmailer and thus Kane Bullard was going to expose him as a blackmailer period I mean I think I pretty much got that by now look at me was a blackmailer oh, yeah Jackson. bitch oh god hey now isn't that a little different from what you've been saying you said that Kane Bullard was the one blackmailing Luke at me. Are you saying that at me was blackmailing someone else on top of that? Ugh, you have to admit that does sound a little odd. It's not odd. It's the only thing that makes any sense. Kane Bullard was blackmailing Luke at me. But Rhonda Light was also being blackmailed by a certain someone. Yeah, buddy. So did you start to receive blackmail letters starting after this incident? Y yeah, just, just a few days after the Tear of Eminon heist. Yeah, see? After that, I started getting the plans in the mail. I received plans from someone very, some very kind person, incredibly detailed plans. Detailed plans? In which case, that would mean that Ron Delight was actually Master Mask. That is what we are claiming, Your Honor. Someone else came up with the plans and had Mr. Delight steal his targets for him. And that someone was none other than look at me, bitch! Silence! <laughs> Now I see. It's all becoming clear. What is? 
When you were in grade school, you received the same report card every year. Careless with the tendency to jump to conclusions. Am I wrong? Huh? How did you... You'd say that I, look at me, was blackmailing Ron Delight. In which case, I would naturally know all about his relation to Master Mask. Well, yes. Ron Delight started receiving plans from his second crime onward, correct? Which means I learned of his identity when he committed that first crime. Good point. You certainly couldn't have blackmailed him otherwise. In that case, let's see some hot, bitter evidence. During the first crime, how did Look At Me know that Ron Delight was Master Mask? Shit. Uh... Uh, um, how did he know that Rondelite was Master Mask? I mean, is there something obvious why he knew? Um, the only things that pertain to Master Mask or anything that Ron did is either the thing that he said or... The newspaper, because that's the only thing that talks about the actual heist itself. And the picture shows them together. But is there something in this photo that shows? I mean, we know that Ron hid his outfit in the trash can, right? Like, we, we learned that, right? He undressed and acted like he was there investigating. We are, we know the story, but, like, there's nothing in our, in our current, like, uh, batch of evidence that, like, says that directly. But let's just go ahead and try it. Take that. Am I right? I think I see it. Okay. See what? When you were in grade school, you received the same report card every year. Gets into lots of mischief trying to be the center of attention. What do you mean? This newspaper clipping. It has a picture of you and Ron Delight in the guard uniform. It seems the Master Mask didn't just disappear into thin air. He just took off his outfit and hid it in the bucket. That, that sounds far too stupid to be true. Correct. With tricks like that, he couldn't fool a baby, let alone an ace detective. And that's when you figured it out, Mr. Atme. That's when you learned that under his mask, Master Mask was really run to light. What the? Wasn't he supposed to be Master Mask? Not only that, looks like he wasn't even an ace detective. I can't believe it. He was just a slimy blackmailer. What a fraud! Trying to pat himself off as a nice detective. Oh, now he's getting pissed. Why, you? How dare you expose me like that? Why, I? I mean, I've never blackmailed anyone in my life. I'm a famous and proud detective and also Master Mask. Why can't you understand that? Oh my god, dude. That, that face. That face, though. I'm afraid you are neither a proud thief nor an ace detective. You're a blackmailer and a murderer. That is your true identity, bitch! Why you? How dare you even dare? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, can't even. Remember, big mouth of yours, you're fearful for my sake. None of you can ever come change this future. So good, I'm a tree, babe. That's been, 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 I'm not sure if I won yet. It would seem we've finally gotten to the real answer. And that was quite a performance by Mr. Atme. Bailiff, please prepare a cell for Mr. Atme. Injection. Oh, shit. God damn it, we're not done? God damn it, Godot. Give up. Give up, you son of a bitch. The hammer that strikes too fast has no time to aim. What do you mean? I'm already prepared to deliver my sentence. Allow me to say one thing. I will be the one to judge. You don't get much more in your face than that. It appears that your claws weren't quite sharp enough, Mr. Trite. What? Where do you... It's true that you've proven a lot of things. Things like Look at Me was a filthy blackmailer. And that he wasn't at Lordly Taylor the night of the murder. That's right. That's why he's the one who killed Mr. B... But, 
There's still one thing you have yet to prove. What's that? Just because he wasn't at the warehouse doesn't mean he was at the murder scene. Therefore, if you can't prove that, this pitiful excuse for a man was at KB Security, then I don't see how a verdict can be delivered! No, no, no way! Shit. Shit. Order. Well, Mr. Wright? This is it. This is the final round. Gotta prove that Atme was at Mr. Buller's office on that night. But, can you really prove that? That's long enough, Mr. Trite. I want to hear your answer. That night, look at me was at KB Security, and the defense... Shit. I don't think I can... Can I prove that? I don't know if I can prove that. I don't have one piece of evidence that connects him to go... Oh, shit. Why would it give me this option if I can't prove it, though? Uh, shit. Well, if it's a but thou must situation, if I say can't prove it, it'll make me prove it anyways. So, let's just see what happens if I can't prove it. Don't give me a game over, please. I... I can't prove it. Just as I thought. Oh, shit, come on, man. Don't give up on me yet. But... If we hear more of Detective Atme's testimony... Oh, no. Unfortunately, that's as far as you go, Mr. Trite. What, what do you mean? I won't allow for any more testimony. That's what I mean. What? What? Have you forgotten? Look at me is here after we interrupted his own trial. And you have failed to prove that he committed the murder. I think it's time for this witness to return to his own trial and face his guilty verdict as master mask. No. Well now, Sir Lawyer, it seems that love wins out in the end after all. I am the ace detective as well as master mask. My verdict will verify that. Just as Ronda Lights will verify that he is the true murderer. I declare that with the full force of my ace detectiveness. Oh God, fuck this guy, dude. Can we just fuck this guy in the face? Order, order of the court. That's enough deliberation over this witness. I can't believe this. At this rate, Ron is... Don't give up now, Nick. We still have tomorrow. We can look for more evidence and... By then, it'll be too late. Huh? But why? Because he's already going to be declared f guilty in the other one. Yeah, exactly. Double Jeopardy. One of the most basic rules of any court of law. Double Jeopardy? Should a defendant be tried and found innocent in court, that defendant cannot be tried again for the same crime. This is a fundamental rule of all courts. And it applies to this witness as much as it applies to anyone else. Mr. Atme will be found guilty in a matter of minutes. Guilty as Master Mask, which means... He will be innocent as far as the murder of Kane Bullard is concerned. No way! The fact that you were unable to prove Mr. Atme's guilt of that crime here means that he will never again be tried as Kane Bullard's murderer. Ah, ah shit! Am I really going to fail? Is this case going to turn out to be a fail? I don't want to see a failure. No, don't give me a failure. No. Now there's nothing I can possibly do to win. Even if Ron is proclaimed to be innocent. The real killer, look at me, will go free. He's not that free, but he won't be, he won't be, tried, he won't be on, on charges for murder. You have cross-examined every statement the witness has made here today. And as long as there is no more testimony, I'm afraid I have to declare that there will be no further questioning of the witness. Are there any objections? Yes, there is. He's a freaking... He did it, man. That's my objection. Objection, he did it. Fucking Godot. Piece of shit. Then I hereby end the cross-examination of Look at Me. No, no. Yes. Wait, who said that? Wait. Who said that? That sounded like the Mia objection. I think I see it. Your Honor, when you were a child, this is what was on your report card every year. Has poor hearing and often makes mistakes as a result. Uh, how did you? Phoenix, raise your head up high. Have you forgotten what I used to tell you? Yes, it is Mia. A lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. Does that mean we got boobs in the house? That voice. No way. Yes, boobs is here. Awesome. Long time no see, Phoenix. 
Mia? Damn right. Hell yeah. This is the true power of the Korean channeling technique. I know that it's really Maya who's standing before me, but right now she's my mentor, Mia Fei. Now, let's do this. But there's nothing more we can do, Mia. Without any more testimony, I can't cross-examine. Not yet. The testimony's not over yet. What, what do you mean? Your Honor, just, just now you said something very interesting. You have cross-examined every statement the witness has made here today. Yes, that's true, but... Unfortunately, Your Honor, you're forgetting something. Earlier, after the last cross-examination, this witness made a number of remarks. Well now, Sir Lawyer, it seems your love wins out after all. I am based detective as mass 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 my verdict will verify that, just as Ron Delight will verify that he is the true murderer. I declare that with my full force of my ace detectives. Yeah, he did say all that, it is true. Yes, but these comments appear to have no importance whatsoever. Very well, then we shall have prove their importance via cross exam wait what? At any rate, as long as the witness has made these remarks, we the defense assert our right to question them. Is that alright with you, prosecutor? Is something the matter, Mr. Cadeau? Ah, uh, nothing. Oh, Sir Lawyer, it looks like you're one step too late. If you think such falsehoods will do anything to me, look at... Let's hear it. Huh? It's true that the witness made some remarks. So then, let's hear this last bit of cross-examination. Mr. Cadeau, what are you... Oh, he knows he slipped up somewhere in there. Very well then, look at me. I'll allow the defense to cross-examine your earlier remarks. The defense would like to hear why you declare the defendant to be the true murderer. So please, give us the one last bit of testimony. I, uh... Phoenix, this is it. This is our absolute last chance. Yes, Chief. Got it. I got this. I got this, man. I got this so fucking hard. Here we go. So he said, indeed, it's true that I was not a Lordly Taylor. All right, let's just wait. Oh, sorry, he's saying new things. I had to leave to see about another vi vitally important job request. I had known about the date beforehand, so I had this photograph readied. My brilliant deduction was what informed me that the true culprit was Ron Delight. And thanks to the keycard and wallet, it was abundantly clear that he was there. I was also able to make a deduction from the buzzer, which only sounded once. The button did not have any fingerprints on it. On it, why? The victim would have left prints if he sounded it, which means the killer sounded it. Mr. Delight was wearing his master mask outfit, which is why he left no prints. And the blackmail letter? The victim likely just mistook the color of the jewel. Sorry. Therefore, all the evidence points to that poor boy. That poor boy, huh? You think so? You think so, huh? Okay. This testimony actually seems to hold up pretty well. It does? It's got to have something wrong. The witness's earlier remarks do not appear to have been hastily prepared. All of his points have been explained, and none of them seem to contradict anything. I'm going to save it, because I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to press all of these statements like I usually get to. Because it already sounds like there was nothing contradictable in there. But of course! But how did you know about the emergency buzzer? The police investigation documents went directly through me. And I always look over all the documents. It's elementary, Sir Lawyer. Uh, are you going to make even more trouble for us now, Sir Lawyer? Oh, he said it. I will not allow any of your usual shenanigans, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. We cannot postpone Look at Me's trial any longer. This is your last chance. H hang on a sec. Just one chance? Huh. It seems that the party's about to begin. Well, Phoenix? There isn't any evidence that contradicts with that testimony. So it would seem. W what do you mean, so it would seem? Listen, Phoenix. Pointing out contradictions doesn't always mean you have to present evidence, does it? At any rate, this is our last chance. If you can't point out a case-breaking contradiction, you lose. That's all there is to it. Okay. Cup number 17, the last cup. It seems like the time has come to put an end to this trial. Shit. I have to find a fatal contradiction in this testimony. I need to point it out without presenting evidence. Shit. Which means all I can do is find the contradiction 
Contradictory remark. Impressive. Okay. Remember, you only get one chance. Very well then, Mr. Wright. Please begin your final cross-examination. Alright, can I get a save? Can I get a save? The last testimony. Can I get a save up in this bitch? Can I save it? Yes, yes. Okay, good. Alright. So, this is gonna be our moment right here. Alright, alright. Here we go. Here we go. We got this. We got this, guys. We got this. We totally, totally got this. I gotta find the one. <sighs> I gotta find the one. Indeed, it is true that I was not a Lordly Taylor. Okay, that one's not, nothing to say about that. I had to leave to see about another and vitally important job request. I don't see anything we could possibly get out of that. I had known about the date beforehand, so I had re ready had this photograph readied. Okay, well, I mean, we already pretty much proved that that's true, so let's keep going. My brilliant deduction was what informed me that the true culprit was Ron Delight. Okay, there, this is just opinion of shit. This isn't stuff we can really, like, take apart. And thanks to the key card and wallet, it was abundantly clear that he was there. No denying that. We've already proven that that's true. Let's not even try to act like there's anything. I want to know why he knows about that, but let's can move on. I was also able to make a deduction about the buzzer. I only said it once. <clears throat> he already said we, he, like, we can't even argue about that because the judge already said something about that. The button didn't have any fingerprints on it. Why? Blah, blah, blah. The victim would have left prints on it if he sounded if he sounded it, which means the killer sounded it. Okay. We established that. Mr. Delight was wearing his Mr. or his Master Mask outfit, which is why he left no prints. Okay. And the blackmail letter? The victim likely just mistook the color of the jewel. That just sounds dumb. That that just sounds dumb. Sorry, therefore all evidence points to that poor boy. Okay. Um. Um. Uh, I don't even know, man. I'm kind of... Kind of at a loss here a little bit. I mean, I got... An ideas, a couple ideas of which ones could have something, but I can only press on one of them. I can only press on one of them. I was also able to make the deduction of the buzzer, the button did not anything of prints. The victim would have left prints if he sounded it, which means the killer sounded it. Mr. Delight was wearing his mask and mask out, which was why he left no prints. Is there any reason why he would know that? I mean, fine, if he knows about the buzzer, and he knows about the wallet and the, the key card, but why does he know Mr. Delight wears the mask, the mask outfit? Like, how did he know that he was wearing the outfit unless he was there? Like, Look At Me was in his own trial all morning, right? So... He didn't hear that part of the testimony where Ron was saying that he was wearing the mask to mask outfit when he went into the room, right? Like, there's no way Look At Me could know that detail, right? Because he was in his own trial the whole time. This is the one that sticks out to me, and I'm glad I, I just I did just save it. So worst case scenario, I just have to reload my save. Hmm. Let's see if I'm right. I'm I'm just gonna go for this one. Son of a bitch, dude. I'm on a roll today. Mr. At me about this last Injection. remark. Uh oh, shit. Am I wrong? Maybe I'm wrong. You still don't get it, do you, Trite? This isn't the time to be pressing the witness on every little statement. I'm afraid you're the one who still doesn't get it, Mr. Godot. Okay, maybe I'm right. What? Mr. At me, it seems you have finally admitted that you were in the CEO's office on the night of the murder. Booyaka, bitch! How could you say that? Let's review your testimony, shall we, Mr. Atme? The button did not have any fingerprints on it. Why? Mr. Delight was wearing his mask to mask outfit. Is that correct? Indeed! That's what I said! My deductions are absolutely foolproof! More like your deductions prove that you are a fool! Ooh, foolishly foolish fools are fools! I'm sorry, whatever do you mean? For some reason, 
I'm starting to get really thirsty. <laughs> when exactly did we learn the fact that Ron Delight was dressed as Master Mask when he went to the... I have... I fucking nailed this to the fucking T, baby. He said it in his thing this morning, and you could have not even known that, Mr. Atme. That was a... It was just a few hours ago. Back when my sixth cup was looking at me with a cold stare. Huh? Oh, did I forget to mention it before? I'm sorry. I just never had a chance to mention it up until now. Yeah, dumbass delight. That's right, the defendant had yet to tell anyone else this fact before this morning. Yeah, that's right, he never said it before either, so it wasn't even in the testimony or nothing. Okay, so now, okay, okay. So I was even more correct than I thought. Anyway, therefore, the only people who should have known this are those who have been watching this trial, bitch! Urgh! Do you understand now, Detective Atme? There's no way that you should have known about that! Ah! Yes, there it is. There it is. You were in the next courtroom being tired is tired. Being tried he's being tired also. Being tried as Master Mask. So then enlighten us. Just how did you know about this piece of information? Objection. Well, uh, oh, I, oh no. Come on, this detective must have known about it. He probably had plenty of chances to find out beforehand. And it's those chances that I want to discuss next. That night, Mr. Delight was wearing his mask and mask outfit. There is one and only one way for Detective Atme to have found that out. Only one? One way, you say? Please remember, if you will, Mr. Delight's testimony. Oh boy. When I entered the office, there was a suspicious shadow there. Booyah, bitch. For a second, my client witnessed the real killer. But Mr. Delight never saw him. There's no way to tell whether or not the real killer was looking at me. It's with this, that statement that I'll turn this case on its head, bitch. Just what are you implying? Mr. Delight saw the real killer, correct? Now if you turn that statement around, it stands to follow that the real killer had also seen Ron Delight. Impossible. Uh, not impossible. Yeah, that's right. It becomes clearer, bitch. Detective Atme, you saw Master Mask at the murder scene that night. You saw him when you killed Kane Bullard and assaulted Ron Delight. That was the only way you could have known that what Ron was wearing, bitch! Oh, we've caused an earthquake now. Oh, this is all bad. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Gonna jizz everywhere. Watch out. Oh, God. I'm not even gonna do all that. My throat cannot handle it right now. That is way too much laughter. Take a good look, everyone. Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one by myself. Here I am, the Tragic Clown. Tragic Clown? That's the same line you gave yesterday. But I think there's a little more meaning behind it this time. <laughs> Not doing it. My throat cannot handle it anymore, man. No more. No more. What an awfully complicated incident. Kate Muller was blackmailing Look at Me, who was in turn blackmailing Ron Delight. And upon killing his blackmailer, Look at Me tried to frame Ron Delight. He then claimed to be guilty as Master Mask in order to escape his true crime. And to that end, he came up with this plan. To use the double jeopardy rule when making his alibi. Um... At any rate, at any rate, it would seem we finally found the truth. Excuse me, I'm guessing this is Ron. I came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man. Besmirching with him with the title of murder. Don't ignore me! It's always him. Oh, I didn't realize you were there. Why wouldn't he be? Uh, um, about the verdict? I know. You never committed any murder. Th that's right. I'm so glad you understand that, but, but... I am... I really am Master Mask! Huh? So, thanks to that... Oh, sorry. So, thanks to that trial yesterday, I'm innocent now, right? Uh... What is it you said? Uh, Double Jeopardy? Now that you mentioned it... I've been careless. Careless? Um... Um... What do you think, Mia? As the defendant says, the rule of Double Jeopardy is absolute. A defendant can never be tried twice for a crime in which he was once found innocent. Then... Mastiff Mask is really innocent? 
For now. It would seem so. For now? Yeah, see, he says we found him innocent yesterday of not being masked to mask. Then it doesn't matter if they think he's masked to mask now. He can't prove it. Can't even try him for it. So suck it. Now then, this court defines the defendant. Booyah, bitch. Victory. That's what I like to see. Victorious. Yeah. Boy, this is really lucky. Uh, wait, or, uh... That isn't so good after all. You see, the thing is, I still am master master after all. Yeah. Yeah. You might want to stop doing that since, uh... You don't exactly have well laid out plans anymore since look at me is out going to be in jail. He can't exactly uh, lay out your plans for you. Also, your wife now probably knows all about you, so you're probably fucked. Assuming that she doesn't want a bad boy, even though she knows she really does. Anyway, you did it, Nick! Thanks, Mia! It's been a long time, hasn't it? Yeah, it's because Maya doesn't call on me much these days. Oh? I'm just joking, Phoenix. Don't take everything so seriously. But on the other hand, Maya, she seems kind of lost these days. You mean about becoming the master of the Korean channeling school? Becoming the master means saying goodbye to our mother. You mean Misty Fay? Watch over her, will you, Phoenix? Of course. Well then, see you around. And back to Maya we go. Mia. Uh, Mr. Wright. Uh, um, I, uh, I, I don't know what to say. Congratulations, Mr. Delight. Thank you so much. Uh, no, wait. Nothing really matters anymore, though. Now all this is happening. Come on, just be happy already. Maya. You've been cleared of murder charges and got off as master master boot. But in exchange, I lost everything. Huh? What do you mean? S stealing security information for gaming security becoming master mask? I did it all for one reason. For her. You mean your wife, Desiree? She hates criminals more than anything. Come to think of it, she was once held hostage by some rubbers, wasn't she? She always said how she went in sneaky criminals. I knew that. I knew that, but... Once I got fired from KB Security and lost all the money I had, she wouldn't have any reason to stay with me. I thought she would leave me for sure. So that's why you became Master Mask? Yes, but it's all over now. Broken Bowl can never be put back together. That's not true, right, Nick? Right. Really? Can we go back to the things we were, huh? You'll be fine, and they can prove it. I can? I kind of wish you would check with me first. Mr. Delight, even if a bowl is broken, there's always a way to put it back together. Does that mean we gotta present him the urn? Does that mean we gotta present him the urn? Does that mean we gotta present him the urn? Uh, uh, it would make sense. Because the urn is put back together, so let's do it. The sacred urn. Desi was the one who found this. Desiree, your wife, she always believed in you, Ron. That's why you'll be fine. You don't have to worry about anything. Ah, oh, there you are. Oh, yeah. M Ms. Delight. You did it, Ronnie. You're innocent. I'm so happy. Thank you. I, I appreciate that, but, um, I, I suppose you don't want anything more to do with me, do you? Ronnie, why didn't you talk to me about what was going on? I had no idea you quit KB Security. I never imagined that you were really Master Mask, either. Ms. Delight, what are you going to do now that you know? You're not going to really leave him, are you? Come on, it's obvious, isn't it? How could I ever let a wonderful man like him get away? After all, my bike's really fast. So fast that there's no way he could ever get away. Oh, um, uh, <laughs> so fast that he'll never get away. He'll never escape me. Um, but didn't you say that you hated criminals? Huh? Oh. I only hate people who act all cowardly and sneaky, like that detective. I see. My Ronnie went and declared his crimes before he committed them, like a man. I just love a man who's so chivalrous. Chivalrous? I knew I was right about you. Every day I spend with you is filled with thrills and excitement. D Desi. Desiree, you really do love Ron, don't you? Nicky boy. Yes? I'm really glad I asked you to defend my Ronnie. Thank you so much. I'll never forget what you've done for us. Oh, well, um, take care of yourself. Too bad you're not leaving him, otherwise, uh, you know, what could have been, you know? Anyway. You too, Nicky boy. Ooh, I can feel my face going red. 
Mr. Dick, Mystic Maya, congratulations! I almost forgot about her. <laughs> Uh-oh, talk about bad timing. Mr. Nick, how could you with another man's wife in front of Mystic Maya? No, 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 you know, you gotta, I'll never forgive you, never. Oh, God, we're getting, we're getting the little girl bashing again, aren't we? Okay, calm down, pearls. Everything's gonna be okay. So just as the case came to a close, so too did my consciousness. Ron said a broken bowl can never be put back together. But I know that's not true. I mean, just look. Booyah, back together it was put. Here's a perfect example of one that was put back together even better than before. Damn right, am I instead of I am. Or Amy, whatever. Alright, dude, we did it, guys. Episode 2, Stolen Turnabout, completed. Damn, that was a long episode. Holy shit, son. That was a long motherfucker of an episode. Can we just skip that for now? I don't even want to play it right now. I just want to save it and be done for today. My word, my word. Whoo boy. Okay, so that's going to do it for today's episode and episode 2 in general is now done. But now we have a recipe for a turnabout. Oh great. And we can have a cooking crime. This is the chef going to murder someone with a machete. I have no idea. I'm just making shit up now. Anyways, uh that was a very very good case. I'm not going to lie. The double double, you know, the double double case where it started off as not even a murder and then it ended up being a murder anyways. Kind of a nice little uh nice little curveball. I like it. And uh, so far, so good, and I hope the next case turns out to be just as interesting. So, great. Now i got to do new voices, probably, because it's going to be new people. New people, new voices, new fun, new friends. Let's have fun in the next episode of Let's Play Phoenix Radius Attorney Trials and Tribulations. Peace out.